So here we have Geomitria brunia, or brunia, probably butchering the name. Looks very similar to Geomitria corfi. Geomitria brunea has these folds that you see, like that white line down the side, where they come in contact. Corfi folds down on itself and is really wrinkly. I was given the identification by people that are more familiar with this mushroom, but both of them are edible, Corfi and Brunia. And you just have to cook them thoroughly, like with morels. Their relative, Geomitria escalenta, is actually toxic when cooked if you don't do it in a well-ventilated area because it releases a chemical because the Geomitrian inside gets turned into monomethylhydrazine, hydrazine, which is basically toxic rocket fuel. So you don't want to deal with that. But here we're going to do some dinner. First, you're going to want to rinse as much dirt and debris off of the Geomitria as you can. You're going to have a problem getting it off the bottom of the stipe, the stem. So I just cut that right off. Then you're going to want to take and cut up the mushroom into some smaller pieces and check up inside the lobes of the cap because you're going to find some bugs. There are commonly snail slugs and armadillo deodai, which that's a roly-poly potato bug for those who do not know. In a moment, you'll see one of our little friends. Oh, where is he? Nothing there. Nothing there. Here it is. No, no, still not there. Oh, there it is. Told you. Little slug. Yeah, you pull those out. Unless you like extra protein. I started off by cheating again and using pre-made pastries, buttery biscuits. I followed the instructions on the container. Then in a large bowl, I put in some normal flour, some ground paprika. You can use whatever seasonings you like for this. I'm just breading the mushrooms. Use some garlic powder. some Italian seasoning. You really don't even have to batter these if you don't want. You can just fry them up in a little butter or vegan butter or any, you know, oil that you want. I added some fresh cracked black pepper. A little bit of that lemon pepper seasoning. If you aren't going to bread your mushrooms, I use the same batter for the perch fillets that I'm also cooking in the sandwich. Mix it up real well to get the seasonings combined very nicely into the flour mixture. I slightly rinsed the mushrooms one more time to get a little bit of water on them to make the flour cling. And then I stirred them up gently. They can be slightly fragile. Threw the pastries in the preheated oven. I'm a little out of order here. Put an entire stick of salted butter into a wok and let it melt. And then started adding in the mushrooms. Depending on how much mushrooms you have, you can do this in batches, but mine all fit in one pan. But you do want to make sure that you do cook these thoroughly. You definitely want to take your time. You don't want to do this on a high, quick, fast heat. One, you'll burn the butter, and two, you may not cook the mushrooms all the way through, and you could get a little bit of a tummy upset. A little gentle stirring to make sure everything's coated nicely.
a little more stirring. Some more stirring. Then I covered them for a few minutes to make sure that the heat actually penetrated through. These are wild caught perch fillets. Just something I had in the freezer. I threw those in the same breading. Stirred them around. I made sure to do the mushrooms prior to the fish. I know they were both being cooked, but the fish can leave behind a lot of residue. Then pull out your mushrooms, place them on a paper towel to drain and crisp up. Add some vegetable oil to your clean wok afterwards. And then bring it to heat. Then place the fish fillets into the hot oil. This I did do in batches because you want to make sure that the fish isn't crowded and sticking together. While this went and fried, it was pretty quick. I started working on my sauce. Sounds crazy, but my sauce consists of some cottage cheese. And I put this into a, my magic bullet blender. And then I simply added a little bit of fresh dill and a little bit of lemon juice to thin it out and blended it into a paste. Works really good on fish and it went surprisingly well with the mushrooms. You could use anything you want. You could use tartar sauce if you're a barbecue fan. You know, these recipes for my foraging aren't, you know, very specific. It's kind of whatever you want to do, but it's a good jump off point to start. It's more a little bit about the information about what's edible out in the world. Shake this stubborn thing. Oop, there we go. Blending, blending, blending. Back to the fish. Pull the fish out. Place that on a tray to cool and crisp. And then you can throw in your second batch. If anybody else has any really good recipes that they feel would go well with these mushrooms or with any of my future recipes, feel free to comment. I'm always willing to try something new. Even if it's something like your grandma's grandma passed down through generations. Let's keep this food alive. When the biscuits were done, I pulled them out and made kind of a Big Mac of sorts. I put some bread, then some fish fillets, then a layer of the bread, then some mushrooms on top, topped with the lemon dill cottage cheese sauce, and another piece of bread. And there you have it. Perch and Geometria Brunea on a flaky biscuit with lemon dill cheese sauce. What's on the menu next? <laughs>